take you and relocate you somewhere the hell out of my woods you chicken thieving scum ah. I feel like that possum looks like a Steve I was thinking Horatio Horatio and he has to have Pete Pete the possum what would the last name be Horatio Hollingsworth Hollingsworth yes the third the third <laughs> of the Shire yes <laughs> now we've discovered some chanterelles in our forest on our cruise around. They're kind of all over the place. See them there. Man, they're everywhere. You could load up around here. Yep. Howdy folks. Today we're gonna to be talking about a cache or as some people want to call it, a cache, mm -hmm. which I prefer because yep. I usually will sachet when I go to the cache. I sometimes saunter. Occasionally I frolic, but not often. Do you ever skip? I have skipped. Um, I frolic, I frolic often in certain seasons not so much in the summer but sachet and sauna seem to be my default so. i like to strut towards my caches I, I will occasionally strut i save that that's usually a mating ritual we won't get into that um <laughs> it's r-rated <laughs> so you know caches are like anything else there's you know a hundred different ways you could skin this cat and it's gonna be depending upon what it is that you as an individual needs what makes sense in your individual setting so okay we're starting off acknowledging that so don't get in the comments and be like well, you forgot the step ladder you forgot this that didn't forget shit this step is what ladder. i want to do this is how i want to do it <laughs> so a little background i did a test back when i was into black powder i put a container of black powder inside of an ammo can and did nothing to it i buried it i came back a year later the powder went bang so that's pretty good feedback uh so here we have an ammo can, and what I've chosen for a location is a fence post. Old number seven from the northeast corner, or however you want to remember that. Because I know some of you are going to say, oh, you're using a metal can, they're going to find it with a metal detector. If I have people in my area going around with a metal detector and ground penetrating radar, I have problems well beyond the scope of what this cache is going to, going to solve. So as far as location, you can put caches in the ground, you could put them in uh, the hollow tubes of cyclone fencing. I mean, they, they could. you could pull a brick out of a wall and make it behind that. There's a thousand ways to do it. You could even put them under the water. Take, an, take a waterproof thing, submerge it, anchor it down, and you could literally have your cache underwater if that's the way you want to do that's it. That's how I do it. I prefer scuba gear to get yeah. to my caches. You have a cache with scuba, you put that on, then you get... Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that's how I do it. Indirect approach. Mm. So this is just like a in a rural setting, you got a lot of metal posts. So if you pass through here with a metal detector, as my son does very often, you're gonna get a hit when you get near that metal post. So that will that's one way to mitigate that. A second strategy you could use is to do a false debris field over your cache. And that could just be tons of rusty bolts, nuts, screws, that type of thing. And you know, then your real cache is beneath that. So they get tired of finding rusty screws for two hours. They're gonna quit and go on somewhere else. So there's that. That addressed the metallic signature. Another thing, I know some of you are gonna say, oh, you're nuts, uh, you're disrespectful, it's taboo, whatever, but just hear me out. A grave, graveyards are an awesome place to put a cache, okay? I'm not advocating doing that or breaking any laws, but if things get bad enough, just think about that for a second. Most people will not disturb a grave. It's a universally taboo, hands-off kind of location. I would not just pick some random grave and be messing with a stranger's grave. I actually had this conversation with a friend of mine and he gave me permission after he's dead to put a cache there and he's dead, so it's fair game. Uh, I'm gonna put a cache at his feet because he said I could. And nobody's gonna mess with it because people don't go digging around in graveyards. 
No, I'm really not going to do that. But if I look back there, I would do it if I had to. All right, so back to the fence post. <laughs> Carry, we're carrying gonna, off. <laughs> we're going to dig this thing here, okay? And first, let me show you what we got in this bad boy. You're going to want to know contents. This is just some stuff I, I grabbed last minute as an example for your viewing pleasure. As far as contents, it's going to be totally dependent on you, your situation. I don't pretend to know that. You have to do the critical thinking by yourself. You know, that's just what you have to do. So inside of here, and please keep in mind that I have already done tests in ammo cans. This is a new ammo can. What I will do when it's for real is I will grease this seal with Vaseline. That helps. That's what I did when I tested the one with the powder. I'm simply doing this as an example. Uh, I'm not actually in placing this cache right now. So the term like bug out or needing a cache implies movement. You're, you're in a place that isn't safe or desirable and you're trying to get to a more desirable place. Let's just go ahead and start by understanding that the theory that most people have of they're gonna put on a bug out bag and go live in the woods forever is not gonna happen. You're not gonna sustain yourself that way for long. You're gonna die. You're gonna need to get somewhere where there is some level of community, some level of support, whatever that means. So to get there, you're gonna need navigational aids. You're gonna need maps such as this map. You're gonna need a compass. You're gonna need pace beads. You're gonna need those things to be able to get where you need to go. I generally always have a knife, but they are so important to my survival that I chose to include one in the cache or the cache. That's a real nice sheet to get on that. Isn't it? That's real nice. Uh, I have water and I didn't do my usual tape modification because what if more than one person knows about the cache and it's like your kids or your family members, you know, I want them to be able to see kind of the writing on there, the flow arrow. I think that might jog their memory. Uh, a little bit of parachute cord there. I've got a poncho to satisfy my shelter requirements. I've got a lighter with a zip tie under it so it doesn't become depressed. And I can use the knife to cut that to extract it, you know. I've got some calories here in the form of a, from Walmart, these little bricks of food. I'm just wanting dead calories. Dates clearly marked. You can cycle out and service those, those caches when you need them. Got a metal container for rain catchment, which again, water here is not a problem, but I'm, I still might need a metal container. Just a general purpose cloth, those I use every day. I got some nails here and I've got a hammer to use with the nails because that's important. Everybody knows that. And you could use whatever receptacle you want up to a 55 gallon barrel, feed barrel. You could do that, bury it right up, just pull the dirt away from the lid, pop the lid, reach down in there and get your stuff. That's another way. I'm hitting that sassafras root, I can smell it. Uh -huh. We now commit thee, hammer and nails, into the earth. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Now, normally, if I'm doing this in the woods, I would lay out my poncho, I would remove a sod plug, set that there, remove all the dirt, be very sterile. In this setting, I'm doing it on a farm. And there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these metal posts. 20 something acres fenced in. Good luck finding which post it is. And there's often a lot of disturbance here as far as soil conditions. And nobody's gonna be here anyway. So I think you should have multiple caches, some on your home turf and some not. Uh, I've known two people in recent history that their houses have burned to the ground. They lost everything. So having some of your stuff Hammers and nails outside make sense. Like roots on top of the ground is definitely a sign that something has been dug. And this is not gonna hold a lot of water because you're on a natural hill here. It's gonna take care of most of that.
and time will do the rest. All right, guys, so you saw the small cache, cache, uh, that's not gonna be enough to keep you warm though. And people do freeze to death all the time. And if you ever talk to anybody that has frozen to death, they're still dead. Um, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a sleep system here, less the big black bag, because it takes up too much room. I've got the Gore-Tex bivy, the patrol bag, a balaclava, wool socks, and some warming layers. I'm gonna place the warming layers into the bag and roll it up, force the air out, put it into a plastic bag and then put it into a plastic barrel. So we should have no water issues at all. So we're just gonna put them on the bottom. Zip that bad boy. Force the air out as we go. Keeping in mind that it's gotta fit through that hole there. Waterproof. There you go. Ready to go. You can put this thing in the side of a hill and just open that, take out what you want, put in things you don't need, cover it up, and just use it like a dead drop. So, what, about, what about food? What about it? Bears. Well, if you package it correctly enough, they ain't gonna smell that anyway. It's a encapsulated thing, encapsulated thing, encapsulated thing. I mean, if you bury, I don't know, a peanut butter sandwich, you know, they're gonna smell it. But like those bricks of food, I've never had them disturb that at all. They don't even paw at it. So see the redundancy? You've got a waterproof thing and a waterproof thing and a waterproof thing. You know, water would have to make it, it'd be impossible. And it also subdues the blue color of this. Now this, instead of digging, we're gonna do an example of what I call a hasty cache, which means we're gonna be operating in this area, but we may not wanna carry all that crap with us. So you might do something akin to this. All right, so understanding channelization, lines of drift, how people move, how people think. You, you're gonna choose a location that nobody's gonna put a foot there anyway. And uh, we've broken it up, so there's not gonna be anything that's visible. And uh, it's hastily done. It's gonna be easy to get to, you know, if we know that we're gonna be somewhere near the area, but we wanna travel light and move fast and just carry water and ammo, but we may be out longer than we think. This gives us a chance to access those warming layers, access something that we can get into and facilitate that in between seasons. Obviously in the summer, you don't need it. Uh, you know, you can put them out and you, you may have to move. One cache location suddenly is not good. I actually had a real world situation, uh, 1999, Y2K. Remember the gonna roll over and everything was gonna just in a cloud of smoke? Never happened, but I did have an infant at the time. Uh, he's probably like, what was he, four or five months old? Yeah. And so I, I had a, a cache of about a dozen five-gallon buckets. Uh, at that time, you know, 12-gauge ammo, 357 ammo, because I hunted with a pistol then a lot. And the rest was all food. So I left it there. Time went on. Nothing happened. Then all of a sudden, the land next door had sold, and they were going to build a house. And they came in and did a driveway right through the middle of my cache, and there were buckets and stuff scattered to the four winds. So... That was unforeseeable, uh, but you do want to think about that like into the future. So, uh, you know, it, just like everything, there is no textbook way to do it. There's all kinds of different ways to do it. I would recommend that you inspect them at regular intervals. Sometimes things might need to be checked, refreshed, this or that. 
Uh, this is just a, uh, to get your, your mind going and show you kind of the way that I approach it. There's other ways. Um, ultimately, we all have to just make decisions that are situationally appropriate to our lives, where we live, what we need, and that sort of thing. Something I thought about would be a really good um, idea mm -hmm. is if you commute a distance to work yes. somewhere midway, yep. something like that, have literally a pack yeah. full of stuff sure. that you could just pull it out, put it on your shoulders, and keep going. And that's, that's the thing with, with uh, doing this type of thing is you do have to plan. You know, I'm here, and my, my desire is to go here. All, along the way, in those waypoints, like if I'm probably by day three going to be here, then maybe I'll re-up on food, you know? And then maybe another three days, re-up on food. But you got to find a place that is going to facilitate your ability to in-place and retrieve the cache or cache without being seen. And right here, I've got micro terrain all around me and not so micro terrain. I've actually got mountains around me. So, and from the air, when the leaves are out, you can't even see. So no problems there. And I'm close to a water source. So that's somewhere I'm going to want to stop anyway. You know, there's no, there is no packing list that I can give you. There is no exact methodology. You have to use this. Everything that, that applies to survival is a thinking game you know no two situations are alike so you have you're only limited to your creativity really it's your imagination but you know there are a couple of hard rules one is you know you want the stuff to be dry and and free from any water infiltration that's that's really important if you're gonna uh be burying hammers and nails you need to package them in such a way that they don't rust stuff like that uh, but i think you should have them you know what if your house did burn down and if you had an extensive cash network even some things close by Okay, the house is burned down in the middle of a collapse scenario, which fire will be more and more of a thing. It already is. Uh, then you can at least, okay, it's freezing outside. We'll go dig this thing up, put the kids in that sleeping bag. Let's make a fire. Let's do this, that, and the other. Here's my hammer and nails for security, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever it is you need. I don't need that much. I don't carry that much because um, I've got a lot of local knowledge here. And honestly, I know so many people, my bug out is going to be like a 10-minute walk to somebody else's house because we, we have a community, we're blessed to have that. Not everybody is. If you're a cubicle dweller in say a city like Atlanta, you know, then yeah, you're gonna have, you're gonna have people issues and you're gonna have water issues for sure. So you have to plan around each situation and that's, that's hard to know. But this is just to kinda, kinda plant some seeds in your brain, you know, get you uh, thinking. And if you don't have caches or don't know how to approach it, hopefully this will help you to start because it's a really good idea to have them, especially if it is your plan to move from point A to point B and that distance has any length at all to it, you're gonna need a few things. So this is some ways that you can approach that. Take care and I hope this helps.